Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's Mark with GeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? I got a coffee, last hurrah for it, so to speak. Hang on. Ah, <laughs> a great cup of coffee from Trader Joe's Autumn Maple Coffee. Yeah, we're into winter now. So this is the last hurrah for an autumn themed coffee. Uh, although you could drink this year round. This is terrific stuff. I don't know if they have any of this left on the shelves of Trader Joe's. If you have a Trader Joe's in your local neighborhood, check it out. It really is a very, very good cup of coffee. I am using my uh, Believe in Dreams coffee mug this morning. Uh, right there. Yeah, this is an organization that my friend Eddie Schaefitz works for. It was founded by his brother-in-law, John DeJulius, and they do a lot of a lot of wonderful work. I will link them below. Uh, but uh, Believe in Dreams, with the New Year's coming up uh, this week, uh, I just hope all your dreams come true in 2022, which is another reason why I'm using this mug this morning. But also a shout out to them for doing some great, great work and uh, wishing them uh, great success in 2022 as they do uh, some really, really terrific work for uh, kids in the uh, in the area. So uh, Believe in Dreams. Again, I'll link them below. Uh, if you're taking me on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate it. Or maybe you have the day off. I'm not so sure about that. With Christmas falling on Saturday, some companies took Friday off, some take Monday off. Some are taking both Friday and Monday. Maybe you're one of the fortunate ones that got both of those days. Either way, if you're on your way to work and you're taking me on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. If you're kicking back at home, hey, thanks very much for tuning in. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things, as I said at the top of the show. So let's get thing let's <laughs> let's let's get things underway as we do every week with the morning shaving tip. Oh boy, got a little tongue-tied there this morning. Very excited to be here. Uh, sometimes I edit those out. Uh, you might see that uh, where if I fumble a word, I'll edit it out. But uh, that's one of those that's, it was so fun and innocent, I leave it in there. So uh, <laughs> anyhow, we're going to kick things off with a morning shaving tip from viewer Frank Miska. And Frank writes, uh, hi, Mark. First of all, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas a happy new year, and much continued success with your channel in 2022. Thanks very much, Frank. I really do appreciate that. I have a tip for you. I've noticed that you and many other wet shavers pour your bloom water in the sink before shaving. I no longer do that. After I bloom the soap, I pour the bloom water, concentrated, into a paper bathroom cup. In between each pass, I apply some of the concentrated bloom water directly to my face. It adds a nice base for the application of a second and third lather. It's like using a pre-shave between the passes. And the lather comes back much more quickly and has more volume and slickness. Just a thought, but it works great for me. Just used this technique with Space Nog this morning. And the result, and the result was fabulous. Thoughts? Again, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, Frank Miska. Frank, I, I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great tip, which is why I'm using it and passing it along. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, I When I pour it in the sink, I'm trying to gather up that bloom water as kind of a pre-shave or a pre-pre-shave, as a lot of other wet shavers do. But uh, setting it aside like that, concentrate it. Uh, you know what? And maybe pour a little bit off, work it in like that. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fantastic. I'm definitely going to try that down the road. And thanks for sharing it with the viewers and other wet shavers out there. Really, really do appreciate it. And to say thanks for you and only you, an original George sketch. So uh, please uh, email me. Email me your snail mail address at mondaymailbag at gmail.com. Mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would also like an original George sketch, uh, all you have to do is email me a shaving tip at mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it on the shaving tip segment of the Monday Morning Mailbag Show, you too will get an original 
George Sketch to say thanks for sending in the shaving tip. So my thanks again to Frank Miska, a really, really terrific shaving tip. Really do appreciate it, Frank. And again, you got a shaving tip, send it in. I'll send you George Sketch. Thanks again, Frank. Really do appreciate it. Okay, we're off to a great start. And in regards to those George Sketches, a lot of uh, viewers who have received them have been framing them up and putting them in their shaving dens. I'm very flattered by that. But more importantly, they have some beautiful, beautiful shaving dens. And I've been saying that if you have any pictures of your shaving den that you would like to share with viewers and fellow wet shavers, please send them in and I'll showcase them on the show. Uh, Glenn Sherman did. He has a George sketch and he really uh, did a beautiful job framing it up. I'm very flattered by this, Glenn. It just it looks absolutely marvelous there. But he also sent along... Uh, some additional pictures of his shaving den, and he has a beautiful, beautiful setup. I love these large cabinets that a lot of uh, wet shavers out there have. Uh, I've seen this in uh, several shaving dens. These are absolutely beautiful. Great for organizing all of your shaving soaps, your aftershaves, that sort of thing. Absolutely beautiful. Love that. Absolutely love that. Love how uh, a, a lot of wet shavers like Glenn have their shaving soaps very nicely organized and stacked and set up so they can find them very, very easily. Absolutely beautiful. Thanks so much for sending that along, Glenn. Really do appreciate it. Great tour of your shaving den. And again, thank you very much for, for uh, framing up the George sketch. Very flattered by that. But Wonderful, wonderful shaving den. And again, if you out there uh, have some uh, pictures of your shaving den and you want to share it with the fellow uh, wet shavers, the wet shaving community and viewers of this channel, please send them in. Just email them to me at uh, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I'll show them here. It's just marvelous seeing all the different cabinetry and storage facilities for the soaps and aftershaves and razors and that sort of thing. Really remarkable and a really neat mini tour of a lot of the uh, shaving dens out there. So Glenn, yours looks awesome. Thanks so much for sharing it. Really, really do appreciate it. Okay, again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. And uh, you know, when I shoot these videos, I am drinking the coffee in between takes and that sort of thing, going from segment to segment. And yeah, I need a refill. I really do. I've been doing, <laughs> I love drinking the coffee and shooting the show in the morning. But yeah, I do go through a lot of coffee. So uh, it's time for me to go back for a refill. As a matter of fact, let's all go back for a refill. Okay, I got a nice refill, a nice warm up. Again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. Got a few topics uh, in this morning's refill, the first of which comes from viewer Alan Hurst. This is regarding the discussion of tin soap containers. This came about because of my use of this one right here, Le Pierre Lucien. And it has this great, great vintage type of uh, soap container, metal soap container that I absolutely love. I'm putting the hot water on here, I'm letting it bloom, and I'm just loading the brush. And it does take a good minute, minute and a half to load this particular shave soap and get a good brush load for face lathering. They recommend that. They also recommend that you keep the lid off of this at all times. But some viewers were concerned about rust building up in a metal container. And Alan Hurst very kindly addressed that. And he writes, Hi Mark, tin soap containers don't need to rust. Here's a tip. First, the chemistry. Metal doesn't rust when it's exposed to liquids with a pH level of 10 or higher. Typically, soap has a level of 12. So when you're finished with your soap, don't rinse the tin with water. Just wipe the top of the soap and sides of the tin with your still soapy brush. The inside of the tin is now coated with a high pH solution, preventing any rust. Do it after each use. Your soap and tin will be happy. Al. Al, thanks very much for that. I am going to do that. I'm going to do that with this one and a few others that I have. And also this one right here. I have yet to review this. This came from viewer Mike H. Uh, this is uh, Caswell and Massey Almond. It's a beautiful, beautiful scent, but it also has this great looking gold tin. 
And uh, that's just absolutely fabulous. It just has a, a luxury look and feel to it. And I'm expecting some great, great results from this particular shaving soap. Again, a beautiful, beautiful scent. So I'm hopefully to, I, I hope to review this very, very soon. Been mean to do it, and it's on the list. But again, another metal container. I've got a few others I'm going to show you later on the show, too. But thanks very much for that tip. I really do appreciate it. My nephew Mike was rooting around some vintage record albums, and he came across this one called The Years to Remember, Those Great Moments in Radio. And uh, he sent along a little snippet to me because it's a Barbasol shave cream radio commercial. Just a little snippet. Now, the whole segment is introduced by uh, the late, great comedian Jack Benny. And it's really interesting to hear some of these older radio commercials. And Barbasol is one of them. And as you know, we've talked about Burma Shave. We've also talked about Barbasol. Uh, this is the Barbasol 1919 uh, classic shaving cream that they've brought back, so to speak. Because I believe the Barbasol product was launched in 1919. And it was one of the first, if not the first, brushless shave creams. And of course, it's been, it's an homage has been done by Douglas over at Phoenix Shaving with CAD. This is so wonderful. As you can see, it's classic barbershop scent. This is a fantastic, fantastic scent. Very, oh, just, just rich, robust, well-rounded, a uh, lot of depth to it. Uh, very, very similar to this, but this is the classic, classic Barbasol scent. So you want this. Now, I've used this uh, as a shave cream, and I've also used it as a pre-shave. And I'll use these together because this complements this, but this really, really does hit it out of the park. So if you're looking for a classic barbershop scent, yeah, check out CAD from Phoenix Shaving. It's absolutely wonderful. And again, uh, it's great to hear this classic radio commercial uh, for Barbasol. Now, uh, Mike digitized, uh, it's about a two, two and a half minute segment, Jack Benny narrating, and I will upload that as a separate file. And um, I'm going to put that there separately. I'm not certain whether, whether YouTube is going to strike this video uh, because I'm going to play a little bit of segment. I'm going to play a small segment of that Barbasol jingle. Now, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be okay. I don't think anyone will complain. Uh, so here it is right here. Give it a listen. Barbasol, Barbasol, the brushless shaving cream supreme leaves your face so smooth. Okay, now if you see the video of the record player and you don't hear the sound, that's because YouTube uh, you know, contacted me and said, no, 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 you got to take that out of there. If it's still there, then everything's fine. No strikes against the, uh, <laughs> against the channel or against the video. But I thought that was really, really interesting. So my thanks to my nephew, Mike, for sending it along. That was really, really great. Uh, Beth Jones sends along something again regarding uh, Haircut Harry's most recent shave video. Really neat to see these. Uh, and she writes, hey, Mark, Merry Christmas. Thought I would pass along to you Haircut Harry's most recent shave video. You will notice that the barber is using the unique razor like the lady barber in Haircut Harry's video in Tokyo, Japan. Just thought you would find it interesting to watch. Hope you have a truly blessed Christmas. Thank you very much for that, Beth. And Merry Christmas to you and yours as well. And yeah, this is neat. I'm going to link to this. This is a really kind of a neat channel. I guess this gentleman travels the world and he gets these different haircuts and shaves from barbers all over the world. What a great idea. And uh, the razor that the barber using is using is one of these. Um, it's, it's almost like a shaveette for a double edge razor blade. Uh, we've talked about these in the past. I think you can get these on AliExpress. I'll try to find the link again in case you're interested in getting one. But it seems like it's a very, very popular kind of shavette for barbers to use uh, around the world. So uh, thanks very much for that, Beth. Really, really do appreciate it. And really, that's it for this week's uh, uh, refill. My thanks to uh, Beth and to Al. And to my nephew, Mike, for contributing this week. Really do appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again. Okay, once again, it's time to check out some new shaving gear. Okay, got a really nice, eclectic, diverse mix of things to show you in this morning's new shaving gear segment. Going to kick it off with something from Tim Whitcup. I uh, wanted to mention this. He recently uh, bought a vintage brush, 
and pass it on to a gentleman named Timothy Abernathy, who did a beautiful brush restoration of it. And Tim, Tim Whitcup sent me some of the pictures. It's going to be sent to him very, very soon, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. He says, I don't actually have it yet, but this is what the restoration looks like. Uh, and uh, it's going to be mailed, uh, well, I guess today it's going to be mailed. And uh, absolutely beautiful. That is really, really nice. So uh, I'll try to get some more information regarding uh, Mr. Abernathy and the kinds of services he provides for brush restoration, if anyone else is interested. Uh, and uh, Tim Whitcup also passed along uh, a deal on Persona uh, double edge razor blades, 100 count. This is a price on Amazon.com. Hopefully this price will still be in place by the time this airs. So you're going to save about 4 or $5 on these. It's a very, very good blade. So thanks for passing that along, uh, Tim. Really do appreciate it. I uh, wanted to make mention of this product from Phoenix Shaving, Shea Butter, uh, because viewer Jimmy V., uh, bought some because he and I are kind of in the same boat of uh, cracked and dry skin during the winter months. I know the edges of my thumbs here, right here and here, and sometimes my index fingers, they uh, they develop a, a dryness and these little cracks, that sort of thing. And I try to fight that back with uh, different moisturizing creams. I thought I'd try the intergalactic, the galactic shea butter this year. And so far, it seems to be working very, very well. As a matter of fact, I like it so much, I bought a second tub of it. And uh, I've been going through this at a pretty good clip. Um, and uh, you can see that, uh, yeah. yeah. But I've had this for, for quite some time, and I am using it for more than just moisturizing my hands. I'm also using it as a, a shaving balm uh, at times. Uh, and it's come in quite handy. And I'm doing that because of the cold weather that's coming on. And as it says on the, um, the product page, our galactic shea butter actually has 101 uses, maybe 102. As I just mentioned, shea makes for a great, simple, good old-fashioned aftershave balm. But it also does wonders on dry, chapped, or cracked skin. Both a protectant and a nourishing, hydrating moisturizer the uses are endless. And that's what I've been doing. I have been using it, <laughs> a lot of endless uses. But I want to show you how I use it. All you need is about that much right there. Not a lot. Uh, the mistake I made early on, which is why I kind of rifled through a lot of it, was using a little too much. All you got to do is get a little bit of like that, put it in the palm of your hand, and really rub it vigorously. Because it is a rather thick, hard kind of um, product. And just... Get a little more liquid on, you know, it get, it, this will warm it up and make it a little more liquid, thin it out a little bit. And once you have it on there, now you can kind of work it into your hands. And it really does moisturize and protect and soothe the skin. It is terrific. And I am using it as an aftershave balm or during the day when I want to add a little bit of... Uh, moisture to my head because of the cold we because of the cold weather especially if I'm out without a hat that sort of thing I'll get a little more like that just like that and you can see I'm just rubbing it into my hands here and then and you can see how it's see that and I take that and I apply that up here like this and just you don't need a lot that's my point you don't need a lot and really it works great. I've done a review. I haven't edited it yet, but I did want to kind of give you a heads up on it that it is really a terrific, terrific product. And if you want, if you're looking for something that is a uh, that is good and nourishing and moisturizing, uh, boy, this Galactic Shea Butter, this has been great. I like it so much. Again, I bought another tub. I'll show you. It's uh, completely full. I haven't cracked that open yet. And again, the mistake I made was using a little too much. Uh, but I've been using it um, on my hands, uh, on my arms, on my head, uh, areas of the face, uh, because of the dry skin weather that we're in right now here in Northeast Ohio. So I want to pass that on to you. If you're looking for something, you might want to give this a try. And it really does a great job of moisturizing. And it's really fighting back the, the dryness on the tips of my thumbs and fingers here. So I like that a lot. So 
So far, so good. And I'll keep your prize of that as well. Just want to pass it on to you. Something else that is that I came across that was really, really neat. Last week, we were talking about uh, using a copper shaving bowl, heating it up, and uh, using that to build a nice warm lather. Well, I happen to show you a copper shaving bowl that I have. One of these that uh, I purchased um, on eBay for like 5 to $8, something like that. And I looked at it after I shot that video, and I thought, my gosh, that thing looks... You know, it's got that patina on it, but it doesn't look exactly clean, and I wanted to shine it up a little bit. And in the house here, uh, I happened to find this product here, Moss Metal Cleaner, right here. Uh, and this is available on Amazon. Boy, did this do a great job. Absolutely wonderful. Now, you saw what that copper shaving bowl looked like from last week. This is concentrated. You just need a little bit. Let me show you what it looks like now. Here it is. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at how that cleaned up. Look at that. I mean, it's like night and day. Look at that. It's just absolutely beautiful. And I was so impressed with it, I decided, well, you know what? I got a few razors that need to be cleaned up. I've got some uh, some of these gem micromatics uh, that are kind of, uh, they're like a brass gold color kind of a thing. And I thought, well, you know what? I'll, I'll use that to clean up some of these. And I couldn't, I just couldn't believe. Look at this. Look at, look at that. Look at how these cleaned up. These things look like they're brand new. Look at that. I mean, it just, it gleams. I mean, it was very, very easy. Again, very concentrated. Uh, all you need is a little bit and you just rub it on and it just takes out, it just takes off all that, that, uh, I guess you could say that patina, that aging that's on there. And it just, I mean, this thing looks brand new. I mean, here's the other one here, here that I have. Look at that. They're both, I mean, that's like a mirror finish right there for gosh sakes in this one here. I mean, absolutely beautiful. So, uh, you know, I decided, you know, well, let's take a look at um, what it would do, say, to uh, the uh, fat boy that I have. And I wanted to clean that up. Look at that. Look at how that cleaned up. Look, I mean, this stuff is really, really great. I mean, it just did a beautiful, beautiful job. This was in good condition when it came to me. I mean, it was really, really nice, nice condition. But that... This moss, I think that's how it's pronounced, moss, really did a great job in restoring this razor and just beautiful. And finally, let me show you my, my late father's Gillette Super Speed. Now, I cleaned it up, but I didn't polish it with, with anything, so I used this on it, and here it is right here. Look at that. I mean, just, just gorgeous. I mean, the handle and everything. This was in really, really good, good shape when, when I found it. I mean, there's no plating loss at all. And it was just in really, really great shape. So just a little bit of this really, really cleaned it up. So, uh, you know, there's been some great reviews uh, about this product online. And uh, one reviewer wrote, I use this to help restore old straight or safety razors. This is the polish you want to make that metal shine like new. And you know what? I've found the same to be true. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful. So if you're looking for something to help, to help uh, you know, restore your old safety razors and bring them back up to spec looking brand new, check out this right here, Moss. I'll have a link below. If you also have any experience with it, uh, please comment below. I haven't uh, heard any, uh, I haven't seen any cautionary comments or anything like that, but I thought I'd pass that along uh, to let you know. It really does work, work great. Just terrific, terrific stuff. Uh, viewer Travis Thornton wrote, I've had that Marvel razor for a while now, and I love that razor. I figured it would be too aggressive for me, but it wasn't. Yeah, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because of the... Uh, the Fine Accoutrements Marvel 3-Piece Razor. Uh, 
right here. This is an absolutely wonderful razor. I found it on Amazon again with an active link where it is for sale. It's also available at West Coast Shaving. So I wanted to show this to you again and let you know that it is available, about $40 to $45. I had a shave with it this morning, two days worth of beard growth, mowed it down after two passes and a touch up, third pass. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful razor. Uh, just terrific. This is a zinc alloy uh, razor that is uh, electroplated. And uh, it absolutely looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, just love the shave that it gave me. Again, I don't believe this is a brass handle. I believe that the entire razor is zinc alloy. And again, they, they say it's electroplated uh, to give you this uh, beautiful, beautiful look to it. And uh, just really just a great, great razor. Uh, great for beginners too. Uh, it is very, very efficient and it's very, very smooth. Uh, I used it with, uh, this morning I used it with the uh, Phoenix Shaving uh, Platinum Strangelet razor blade and got an absolutely beautiful, beautiful shave. No nicks, no cuts, no irritation. Just really, really terrific. So wanted to make mention of this uh, right here because it's absolutely fantastic razor. And uh, again, uh, there are links to Amazon and West Coast Shaving where you can get one. The rumor was that this was going out of production. So uh, I will link it below if you're interested in getting one. Uh, please, you know, grab, grab it now while it's still available. I, I can't verify whether it's going out of production or if that's just a rumor. I don't know. I, I just don't know. But uh, yeah, I've been very, very happy with this razor. Really, really terrific razor for the money. So uh, that is the Marvel uh, the fine accoutrements Marvel uh, three-piece safety razor comes in a box like this. An engineering marvel is what they say. Comfortable and efficient. Yes, I agree with that 100%. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, my nephew Mike and his girlfriend Brittany very, very kindly sent uh, for Christmas, sent me a Christmas gift of some sh shaving soaps. This comes from the Glen Avenue Soap Company. They are an all-natural uh, soap company. Uh, and uh, here's what they say. We handcraft all-natural soap and skin care made from sustainable and biodegradable plant-based ingredients. Custom blends of essential oils produce wonderful fragrances that make washing fun and provide an aromatherapy boost any time of day. Superior quality, all natural products for everyday use at a fair price. So he sent along the two shaving soaps that they sell. This is Forest and this is Fresh. And both of these are absolutely wonderful. Uh, beautiful, beautiful scents. Let me show you what it looks like here. And of course, this goes back to the metal tin that we were talking about earlier. Got a metal tin here and here it is right here. An all natural shaving soap. I am really looking forward to using this. Now, I've used some all natural shaving soaps in the past and my experience with them has been low lather, high slickness, which is uh, sometimes a really wonderful, wonderful change of pace. So I'm looking forward to uh, using this because I look forward to that change of pace in my shave, uh, trying different soaps and getting different qualities of lather and different uh, qualities of slickness, that sort of thing. So that's what I'm expecting from, from this, an all-natural shaving soap. So if you're looking for an all-natural shaving soap with natural shaving ingredients, uh, check out Glen Avenue Soap Company. This is an absolutely wonderful scent, as is the forest. Boy, both of these scents are absolutely spectacular. Uh, like them a lot and uh, looking forward to shaving with them. So again, they're out of Columbus, Ohio. They have two uh, locations on Fifth Avenue in Grandview and also at Easton Town Center, I believe it's called. So uh, looking forward to shaving with both of these. So thank you again to Mike and Brittany. Really do appreciate it. And again, uh, metal container, so uh, we'll, I'll, I'll heed Al's tip regarding using a metal container and shaving, so, uh, so that's great. And also, finally, wanted to show you, I have been, I've been meaning to show this to you for the past few weeks, and uh, this is a good time to do it right now. This has to do with the Rex Envoy Razor from Rex Supply. Uh, this, this is the case that it comes in. Well, it's a separate case that you can buy with it. Uh, here it is right here. Beautiful, beautiful stainless steel razor, just beautifully machined. 
And uh, the discussion was uh, a viewer wanted to know if they could use different handles with this razor head. And uh, I suppose you could, but uh, I cautioned against it because this base plate has this beautiful countersink machined into it where the handle is so precisely machined that it fits in there like that, like a hand in glove. It's just absolutely beautiful and seamless. I suppose you could get another razor handle to fit in there, but you're going to have to try to find one the same diameter that they have they have machined here onto the handle to fit into that countersink. I wouldn't recommend doing it at all. I, I just don't think it's the thing to do. Well, uh, some viewers said, hey, Mark, uh, Rex Supply sells a longer handle for the uh, Rex Envoy because that was the whole point. Can I get a longer handle for it and swap it out with a longer handle? I, I wasn't a fan of just grabbing a, a, another handle and trying to fit it in here. Viewer said, you know, Rex Supply sells a longer handle for the Envoy. And here it is. Been meaning to show it to you for quite some time. And it fits in there just beautifully. Look at that. So now I have a longer handle for the Rex Envoy. Here's the regular handle here. And there's the longer handle. And I'm really looking forward to using this. And yeah, it gives a whole different feel to the Razor. Uh, really, if you have larger hands and you have a Rex Envoy, you might want to consider this handle. It is terrific. Same kind of great knurling on the longer handle as that you have on the smaller handle, uh, but just an increased length. Uh, with that increased length comes a little more heft, so that's probably going to change up the shave just a little bit. Uh, really looking forward to reviewing this longer handle, so just wanted to mention that to you. Been meaning to show this to you the last few weeks. Uh, finally remembered to do it <laughs> and uh, really excited about using it. So um, my, my advice is if you have a Rex Envoy and you're looking for a longer handle, um, you know what, just, just get this. This was, I think, $40, uh, this handle. It was $40, well worth the price. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just, I just, it just fits. It's specifically machined to fit that countersink and that base plate there. And it just fits so wonderfully well. Uh, I, I would, I, I prefer to do that rather than try to hunt around for a, uh, a handle that may or may not fit. Uh, this fits perfectly. And again, it's a very, very good price. I will link it below in case you have an Envoy and are in, interested in getting a longer handle for it. Uh, and again, it's just, it's, it's just terrific. It really is. All right. So that's it for new wet shaving gear this week. Thanks very much to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's get to some of these questions and comments. This first one comes from viewer Travis Thornton, who writes, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Mark, you make it look so easy, and I know I have sensitive skin on my neck, but I've been wet shaving for about two years now and thought I knew what I was doing, but I still struggle with irritation on my neck, and I shave my head too, just like you. But I realize I can't use a Parker razor or Allen block because, man, my neck burns really bad. I don't know if I'm putting too much pressure or I'm not angling the razor right, but I love wet shaving, but sometimes I dread it because of the irritation. Any advice? Well, uh, Travis, um, thanks for that uh, question. Um, I'm going to put it out there to some viewers. And, um, hopefully they can offer some sec uh, suggestions and recommendations about uh, what you can what you can do to improve your shave. I've got a couple of things to mention to you right off the top of my head. The first one is map your beard. Uh, let your beard grow out for about two, three days and actually look at what direction your hair is growing in, uh, what, that, what direction that beard is growing in. That could tell you. I'm, um, I guess you could say I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I guess, uh, mainstream, common, ordinary kind of beard where um, my beard isn't that demanding and that uh, when I'm doing a with the grain pass from my face to my neck, my beard is growing in the same direction. Now, some wet shavers uh, on their neck, if, they, if they're doing a with the grain pass, when they get to their neck, they might be going against the grain. Uh, so it's, uh, it's really important that you map your beard and understand the direction that your beard is growing in uh, so that if you do that first pass, Let's say your beard is growing upward. Instead of shaving down against the grain in that first pass, you would shave 
uh, upward, which would be with the grain. So, so really, map your beard. That's the first thing that I, that I would that I would mention. Uh, the second thing, uh, the second thing that I would mention is a, just do really, really, really proper prep. Do a, a, get a pre-shave oil or pre-shave cream or pre-shave soap. Use that. Uh, make sure that you've taken uh, a good hot shower or you have a nice warm towel to really, really soften that whisker up. That's another. That's another thing that you could uh, that you could do also. Also, kind of in the opposite direction. Uh, a lot of wet shavers out there have found that cold water shaves uh, have cut down on, on irritation. Uh, there's a lot of wet shavers out there that have said that doing a cold water shave, their irritation just dropped uh, from, from doing a cold water shave. And it is a different kind of approach. And yeah, I like to do a warm water shave. I've done the cold water shave. And it really, it's very invigorating. And a lot of wet shavers swear by it. Uh, I prefer the warm water shave, but I have done cold water shave. And a lot of wet shavers out there say that it cuts down on, on, on irritation considerably, considerably. Uh, your mileage may vary. Let's just say that. And the other thing that I want to mention is that some wet shavers have said that they have gone with a sharper blade. A sharper blade uh, actually helps their shave. Instead of going milder, they've gone sharper a little more aggressive uh, with their blade and their razor. That's something else that they, uh, they've they looked at. And that has helped them too. Again, all these suggestions, your mileage may vary. Uh, but those are all suggestions that uh, you might want to try. Uh, and I'll ask the viewers out there if they have any other suggestions to please comment below and let us know uh, what they have done to improve their shaves and maybe cut down on neck irritation. But those are the main things that I've always been uh, aware of. Uh, map the beard, uh, maybe go a little sharper, uh, do good prep, pre-shave, uh, do good prep with pre-shave, that sort of thing. Get a good lather uh, and, and uh, also um, cold water, uh, cold water shave. That might really, really help. Uh, but those are some things that, uh, that I'll just throw out there. And, uh, and I, hope, I hope those help. And again, if you have any suggestions for Travis, please comment below. Okay, along the same lines, viewer Bustopher Columbus wrote, So far, what works the best for me is cold water shaving with the PAA Cube, Paraso Green Soap, Alum, the classic aftershave splashes, Sterling aftershave balm. That stuff is a heaven send, and I'm still testing blades. So thanks very much for that, Bustopher. I really do appreciate it. Again, there you go. Someone else who is attesting to a cold water shave, improving their shave. And I uh, really appreciate you sending that along, Buster, for Columbus, because again, you know, everyone's different and uh, there are different ways to cut down on irritation and to, prove your sh and to improve your shave, that sort of thing. Cold water shave might be one, one direction to go in, might be something to try. So uh, again, thanks very much for that, Buster, for really do appreciate it. Okay, Kevin Binfeld happened to comment on a review I did on the Lord L6 safety razor. This is a bargain safety razor. This retails for like five, six, seven dollars, something like that. Comes with a very nice razor head and, a, and an aluminum handle, uh, but it delivers a really, really nice, nice shave. So Kevin wrote that, um, he wrote, I just ordered one three days ago. And I happened to comment back and I said, Kevin, the L6 is probably one of the better, more well-regarded and most well-known bargain razors in the wet shave world. That's very true. A lot of wet shavers know and like this razor. And this is one that I would consider throwing in my dop kit if I was traveling. Uh, you know, it's very affordable. I won't miss it if I lose it, but it still delivers a really, really nice shave. Now, some folks, uh, some wet shavers out there will uh, use a different handle with this. Uh, the, they don't like the lightweight quality of the handle. I don't mind it too much, but the aluminum handle does make it a lighter weight razor. And uh, Kevin did the same thing and he wrote back, uh, so it's an L6. I replaced the crummy handle <laughs> with a West Coast Midnight Open Comb handle. Wow, fits perfectly. I only, I only did one side of my face, not much growth, some stubble, smooth as butter. 
So yeah, he's going to wait for his beard to grow out and uh, you know use this again. Hopefully, uh, you, you're getting some great shaves with this. But yeah, a really affordable razor, a great razor. Just wanted to make mention of it to the viewers out there. If you're looking for something that uh, is affordable and gives a nice shave, something you can easily uh, install a different a different handle to and still get uh, great shaves, then check out the uh, Lord L6. It really is a terrific razor. It's a bargain razor. And again, this is one that I would not hesitate to take with me, throw it in my dop kit if I was traveling someplace. Uh, and again, it's one of those razors because it's less than $10 and delivers a really, really nice shave. If I were to lose it or misplace it, you know, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be broken up about it. But yeah, terrific, terrific razor. Great for travel. Great as a daily driver for home. So check out the Lord L6. And my thanks to Kevin for bringing it to my attention again. Okay, this next question and comment comes from viewer Rodney Ripplinger. And he writes, Hi, Mark. I believe you were speaking to the fact that your dad's super speed had a potentially troublesome blade end overhang. I experienced the same thing with my Gillette Slim adjustable razor. Last week, I was nearly at the end of a problem-free shave with it when I had one of the edges dig into my cheek and create not a cut, but a tiny slot. Ouch! I saw someone take a DE blade and trim the ends off with the scissors to reduce the overhang a bit. I'm thinking of trying that and keeping that particular blade for use in razors that have that problem. The only problem I can see that might happen is you might inadvertently make the edge even sharper. What do you think, Rod? Well, Rod, um, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I love using the Gillette uh, Super Speed and the Gillette Slim and the, and the uh, Gillette Fat Boy, and I don't find the, uh, the blade overhang to be problematic at all. I just point it out to wet shavers so that they know that there is a little bit of overhang there. Uh, and I don't find that uh, it gets in the way of the shave. I'm taking my time and I'm being aware of it. However, let me say that when I came back to the traditional wet shave, the first razor that I bought was the Vikings Blade Chieftain. And the reason why I bought it is because they did make mention and emphasize that the blade, that the end tabs of the blade were enclosed in the razor head. And I found that to be a great benefit when learning the traditional wet shave. And I do like razors that enclose the end tabs uh, in the razor head. I think that's wonderful. But I'm, I'm not put off by a little bit of uh, blade overhang. I'm just, I'm just more aware of it, and I take my time, and I just know it's there. So whenever I review a razor, I always try to point out whether or not the end tabs are, overhang, are overhanging a little bit or a little more or whatever it is. There are some advantages to having, uh, say, a Gillette Super Speed with a little bit of blade overhang, and that is that the, the razor head's a little more maneuverable. It gets into some, some tighter areas a little more easily. You just have to know where the blade overhang is, and that's kind of the way I do it. Uh, but yes, when coming back to the traditional wet shave, uh, having the end tabs enclosed in the razor head, like on the Chieftain, was a big, big plus for me. And I would say to any beginner out there, uh, if you're going to get, if you're going to choose a razor to start with, get one where the end tabs are enclosed or very, very nearly enclosed, which is why I think the, when we talked about recently, the, uh, the fine accoutrements, uh, Marvel razor, this is very, very good because the end tabs aren't completely enclosed, but they're very nearly enclosed. You can just feel them, but there's not a great deal of overhang there. So that's just kind of my take on it. I, I will not, I'm not going to trim the blade like that. I'm not going to do it. I just think that, I think you're right. It's going to lead to a sharper area and probably be even more problematic than having the blade overhang. Uh, and again, I just take one of two directions. I either use a razor that has no overhang. And if there is a little bit of overhang, I'm just more aware of it. And uh, in, in some ways, again, I find the razor head to be a little more maneuverable. I'm just aware of that blade overhang. So that's why I point it out. So um, I think that, uh, I, think it I think it's gonna vary from wet shaver to wet shaver. Uh, what do you say? Do you like a blade overhang a little more? Does it make the razor a little more maneuverable and you're able to you know, avoid tagging yourself? Or do you prefer having 
the blades enclosed, the blade, the end tabs enclosed in the razor head. Comment below, let me know. I really would be interested in, in hearing what the wet shaving community feels about that. But me, I can, I can go either way, but I am very, very happy that when I came back to the traditional wet shave, I used a razor that enclosed the end tabs. I thought that was a big, big plus when learning the traditional wet shave. Absolutely, no, no doubt about it. And again, I don't think the uh, the blade overhang on the uh, Gillette Super Speed is, or the or the Slim, or the Fat Boy is any more problematic than any other razor. Uh, if it overhangs a little bit more than some others, well, I'm just a little more aware of it, and I just adjust my shave and my technique accordingly. So thanks very much for that, Rod. Really do appreciate it. Again, really interested in hearing what the others out there uh, have to say about blade overhang. Really interested in hearing your comments, so comment below. Let us know. <laughs> Viewer Daniel Hannon asked the following question. What does a pre-shave do? Great question, uh, Daniel. Uh, pre-shave soaps, pre-shave creams, pre-shave oils, they all work in different ways. Generally speaking, depending on the kind you would use, uh, they're prepping the skin. And they're just kind of going about it in a different way. They're lifting the whisker. They're helping to soft the whisker. Some of them are degreasing the skin a little bit. They're adding a layer of slickness, depending on the kind of pre-shave that you're using. Uh, I have found that uh, a pre-shave soap, like the Cube 2.0, is wonderful for degreasing the skin and prepping the whisker. Uh, and I find it's great for face lathering. It just works so well when I'm face lathering a shaving soap. It just mixes in really, really nicely, adds a little more slickness, as I say, degreases the skin. Uh, a pre-shave cream, for me, works uh, along the lines in the same way. Works very, very well with shaving soaps when I'm doing a face lathering. Pre-shave oils are a little different in that uh, they are lifting the whisker a little bit, but I find that those work better for me when I'm doing a bowl lather so that I have a layer of pre-shave oil on my, on my face that's, that's adding that extra layer of slickness. And then after I get done developing a lather in a bowl, I'm painting the lather on. So now I have two layers of protection. I have that pre-shave oil you know, on my skin, and then I have that lather on top of it, and both are kind of working hand in hand. But there are, I guess you could say, I, I interpret it as being two distinct layers there that are kind of helping one another. Whereas when I'm doing face lather, I'm kind of mixing everything together. Uh, so that's kind of the way I look at it. Uh, my suggestion is to, you know, try them. Try, try them all. Try the cube. Try the cube uh, pre-shave soap. Try a pre-shave cream. Try a pre-shave oil. Find out which one works best for you. And some pre-shave oils out there are great. They're really, really great. They really do lift the whisker, soften a little bit, prep it, that sort of thing. I just find that, generally speaking, that a pre-shave oil works better when I bowl lather. Now, I have used it in, in doing a face lather, and, that's, and that's, that's fine. It works well. It's just that I think that just laying that oil on there and then painting over the lather, I think is probably a more um, optimal benefit for uh, the pre-shave oil to do its thing. Uh, that's kind of my interpretation of it. But I like using them all. But since discovering the Cube 2.0, uh, yeah, I'm using, I'm using a pre-shave soap uh, because I face lather. And I love, love doing a face lather. And the Cube seems to work with... Uh, a lot of shave soaps out there and, uh, and some shave creams as well. And I just like the face lather. So pre-shave soap uh, really helps me, uh, degreases the skin, gets it all set. And then uh, uh, the way I use a pre-shave soap, like the Cube 2.0, is that I'll wash my face with it. Then I'll apply it to kind of give, a, kinda give it a nice uh, added base of slickness and then do my face lather on top of that. And I just seem to get a great shave with it that way. If I were to use a pre-shave oil, I would apply the oil, really work it into the skin, and then paint on a lather. Sometimes I've done a face lather, but I think optimally, optimally, optimally? <laughs> I think the greatest benefit 
uh, from a pre-shave oil is to uh, paint the lather on over it. That's, that's kind of what I found. Your mileage may vary. Interested what other viewers think about pre-shave uh, oils, creams, and soaps and the routine you might have. Uh, am I right or wrong about uh, the pre-shave oil and building a lather in a bowl and that sort of thing? Let me know below because, again, your miles may vary, but this has kind of been my experience. I don't think there's a right or wrong way to go about it, but I am interested in hearing what other viewers have to say about it. But generally speaking, Daniel, uh, it's always a great idea to do some sort of pre-shave in your shaving routine. Sometimes in reviewing a shave soap, uh, I will do the shave, I will just review the shave soap and I won't do a pre-shave just for the purposes of showing the viewer uh, how good of a lather and how much protection that soap alone will provide. Uh, but uh, really, if I uh, use the soap after that, I'm using, I'm using the Cube 2.0 or uh, some other kind of pre-shave cream. Uh, and again, I'm a face lather, so that's kind of why. I limit myself to those two. Pre-shave oils, yeah. When I'm going to do a bowl, bowl lather or build something up in a scuttle, yeah, then I'll definitely use it. Then, I, then, I'll, then that's a good opportunity for me to use a pre-shave oil. Uh, again, it's kind of, kind of my routine, uh, painted, painted on over the oil. Sometimes a shave soap and an oil don't play well together is what I'm saying. When you paint them on, they're kind of, uh, you know, like, a, a, like, a, like a two different barriers on there. Uh, so that's kind of the way I look at it. Again, comment below. Let us know what is your routine with the pre-shave, uh, pre-shave oils, soaps, creams, that sort of thing. Thanks again for the comment, Daniel. Really do appreciate it. Okay, this next comment comes from viewer Amher Hosin Sari. And he is writing in regards to a newly acquired Mercur Futur. Now, he used another razor prior to getting the Mercur Futur, and he wrote, Hi, Mark. This used to be my daily driver razor until I tried the Mercur Futur. Awesome, smooth, and efficient razor. The only problem I have with it is poor gold-plated finish that destroyed in less than a month. Do you have the same experience or any opinions about that? Well, I have the chrome-plated Mercur Futur, not the gold-plated. And that seems rather unusual. So I contacted Chris Evett over at RazorPlate.com, and he very kindly wrote me back and said, Hi, Mark. Gold plating is by far the least durable plating option. It is much softer than either nickel or chrome plating. That having been said, if there were no quality control issues with the plating, I can't imagine the gold plating wearing off the razor in less than a month unless the guy is frequently cleaning and polishing the finish. Gold plating should never be subjected to metal polishes. Doing so will literally remove the plating in short order. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning Chris's comments on that is because earlier in the show, I talked about this wonderful, wonderful metal polishing uh, compound right here from Moss. And you saw uh, the, the job that it did on these razors. They're just beautiful and also the uh, copper bowl. But I did want to point out that do not use this on uh, a gold-plated razor, as as um, as Chris pointed out, uh, and uh, he happens to write here also. Most of the time, the vintage gold-plated razors were coated with lacquer. The lacquer was to protect the gold plating. That is probably why you did not remove gold from your micromatics when you polished them. Newer gold-plated razors, newer gold-plated razors may or may not have lacquer coatings. For example, my precious metal supplier does not recommend the use of lacquer, as the chemical formulation of modern-day gold plating solutions can provide a more durable finish. I don't think any of the razor plating vendors vendors use lacquer today. Uh, he also goes on to say. Uh, those appear to be yellow brass, the gem micromatic razors. Polished brass looks fantastic. The problem is that when bare, the problem is that when bare brass is used and gets wet, it will start to get patina. No worries, the patina can be polished away easily. A lot of guys really enjoy highly polished brass razors. To my knowledge, the micromatic was available in a chrome option or a gold option. I believe that most of the brass ones started out as gold-plated ones, and the less durable gold plating simply wore away over time. So that's probably what I have here, 
is just a gold-plated uh, micromatic that is now completely brass because the gold is gone. Uh, but uh, you know, having said that, do not polish uh, your gold razors. If you have a gold-plated razor, don't polish it. Uh, just wipe it down with, I guess, a soft cloth. Uh, don't polish it at all. It'll wear away the gold. And um, Amir Olson, I don't think it's... Uh, uh, Amir Osen or Amir, I don't think it's uh, unreasonable for you to contact Mercur and talk to them about that and find out why uh, the uh, the gold plating uh, wore away. If you didn't do any polishing or anything like that, it should still be there. So I would definitely would uh, would give them a call. And uh, if anybody else out there has tips or tricks regarding uh, the care of a gold plated razor, please comment below and let us know. Really would be interested in hearing what you have to say about that. And my thanks to Chris Evett for passing along that information. That is really, really uh, helpful and useful information and uh, also allowed me to understand, uh, you know, why these uh, look so great. I guess they're just bare brass right now and not gold plated anymore. So uh, great to hear that. And again, don't use, <laughs> don't use this to polish your gold razors, your gold-plated razors. Uh, these are, this is great for the, uh, for the, for the copper and the brass and that sort of thing, but uh, don't use it on gold-plated razors. Just wanted to pass that along, just in case you saw the earlier segment and said, "Oh, I'm going to polish my gold gold razor with that." No, gold-plated razors do not do not use this uh, with that, uh, according to what Chris is telling us. So thanks again to uh, Chris, Amir, I hope that helps you. And again, folks, if you have any additional comments regarding gold-plated razors, please comment below, let us know. Really would be interested in hearing those comments. Well, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out the Executive Shaving Company. Use the code MARK5. Check out my blog, georgetoney.com slash blog for my comic strip, George. Other cartoons, other videos like this. I'm on Facebook. Check out my Facebook page. Check out Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements for some great, great shaving gear. Check out vikingsblade.com for some great shaving gear. Check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash marks are 80 where you'll find all the products I review in this channel Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Happy New Year and make it a great week.